and we will now begin with our candidates' opening statements. Our first opening statement is from Bev Rapinon. Is this on? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, since I didn't know there was going to be an opening statement, and since I have been talking with citizens every day for the last three weeks, I'm walking four to three to four hours in the morning and the afternoon. So <clears throat> please excuse that. I, every once in a while, I get a little bit of a cough out of it too. So I'll try my very best to at least keep talking. Okay, so during this opening statement, may I ask what we are supposed to cover? Whatever you'd like. Whatever I'd like. Huh? Okay, well, first of all, I'd, I'd say thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, secondly, thank you very much for suggesting that you know this happened because I think it's a really good idea. Um, and I can start out and introduce myself. And I, most of you know me, I, I'm Deb Reppinen, and I moved from Hawaii to Maitland here in 1974. I, was a, I am a science teacher, or was a science teacher at Evans High School and at Maitland Middle, and I taught gifted science there. <coughs> I enjoy some fun things to do. I have water skied most all of my all of my life. I went water skiing up to three months ago. Uh, I also enjoy running or did, but I finally ran to the point where the doctor said my knee had to be operated on. So that killed the running. So then I started <coughs> uh, walking. And I love to play canasta. Is there anybody here that likes canasta? I know you were born up north if you do. Okay? Is that the end of me? Oh, oh okay. She, she raised the sign. Um, let's see, I also uh, love gardening. My, my son and I have contests all the time. We who can grow the biggest tomato? Who can grow the biggest potato? And I beat him on the potatoes because he never knew that potatoes could be grown here in Florida. So we have a lot of fun teasing each other. And he doesn't know it, but sometimes I kind of fool with him because we had a contest to grow the biggest, highest <coughs> sunflower. So I stood at the bottom of my lawn and took a picture upward, which projected the object to be much bigger than it was, and so I won the contest. And he's still mad about the idea. He doesn't know if that's what I did. But we have a lot of fun with the two of us. Um, I think I'll stop there and let somebody else talk. OK, our next opening statement is from Lori Wessel. Okay. I came by that name in the last 10 years. So. Uh, I'm Lori Wurzel. Uh, thank you for being here. It makes the civics teacher and me super happy to see so much civic engagement. And I know there's a, probably, I'm guessing, a lot more online. So thank you for being here and to all the sponsors um, and to the league, of course, for putting this on. Uh, as a way of short introduction um, about myself, I have my bachelor's from Vanderbilt University and my law degree from the University of Miami School of Law. I went um, to law school to help underserved communities and that's what brought me to Orlando in, in 2008 when I started my career as an assistant public defender in the Ninth Judicial Circuit. I later switched to an area of, of great need, I think as well, as an educator. So I earned my teaching certificate for that purpose and started teaching criminal justice and law studies to high school students starting in Orange County Public Schools. And most recently, our newest project, my husband Ben and I um, have been building our own small business for the last few years. It's a law firm that we run together, just the two of us, um, mostly harmoniously. Uh, for the last few years, and that's where I spend um, my professional time now. I've also been on several boards, uh, professional organizations and community organizations in, in Central Florida for the last decade. 
I am also, though I'm a mother, um, my husband Ben and I, I, I literally, my voice shakes every time I talk about my kids um, in the best way. Uh, I have two daughters, Wynn and Callie, with my husband Ben, and they are really, uh, at the end of the day, the reason that I'm here, uh, in part because my husband Ben and I knew always that we wanted to raise them in Maitland, because that's where Ben was raised and went to school always, and we always knew that that's what we wanted for them, and we feel really lucky to be able to give them that opportunity. Um, and really lucky that Maitland is still the kind of place, as it was when my husband grew up here, that you want to raise your family. Um, and so uh, we're really excited to have the opportunity. The oldest is in second grade at Domerick, and the youngest is registering for kindergarten in a few weeks. Um, and I am invested in the community uh, on for all of us and for, for my children. I'm excited to bring my experiences and sort of new ideas and diverse experiences to Maitland and to contribute in that way. It's something I've always done, but contributing uh, through government action. And I'm excited to make sure that Maitland continues to evolve to serve each of the next generations. My hope is that I could help lead Maitland to be the kind of place that my children are excited to raise their families in 30 years. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And our next opening statement is from candidate Lilling. Well, good evening. My name is Colleen Lilling. I'm a wife, my husband Terry Lilling, right here. He also grew up in, in Maitland, too. He came, uh, moved here when he was 11 years old, <laughs> Maitland Woods. Uh, he's the project manager of a construction, a construction company in Tampa. We have two boys. Jack and Charlie. Jack is 16, Charlie is 14, and they both went to Domerick and Maitland Middle School. And now they're at Winter Park High School. Go Wildcats. <laughs> we lived here for 12 years. We live in Domerick Estates. Schools here are wonderful. Uh, that's why we moved here to Domerick Estates. We didn't live in, my husband lived in Maitland Woods and it's also a beautiful place to, to raise your children. So we had to find an empty house <laughs> and we found it here. I'm also a volunteer band mom. My child, uh, Jack, plays the trombone at Winter Park High School. I'm a vice president of the Domerick Beach Civic Association for the Homeowners Association. And we have been attending Maitland Presbyterian Church for about 10 years, and I became a deacon and then a moderator, currently serving.
really worried about is that we have some unsafe conditions that we're condoning. And I'm talking about the unsafe crossing of the railroad tracks at Horatio Avenue and Maitland Avenue. <clears throat> I got caught on the tracks with two cars behind me and nowhere to go. And it was a very, very sad situation because I couldn't get out. If the train came, I couldn't get out. A, an opportunity, I love opportunity. It's the greatest thing about our city. And that's the end. Okay, that's the end. Candidate Wurzel. I think something we all agree on for a reason is one of our strengths is our community and the people here. I think that the weakness that we have is that our commitment to that history, a rich history um, that starts with our connection to Eatonville and builds from community from there, is that we sometimes are afraid of evolving, um, even though I believe we can evolve and maintain our roots to a history as a strong community. I think we have a time of great opportunity right now. I think we're headed in the right direction, and it's an exciting time. And I think that the threat, the greatest threat that we have is the possibility of letting that opportunity pass us by because of those fears. And that's it. Thank you. We're having a little issue with flanks blanks on the table here. <laughs> <laughs> Candidate Lilly, please. No, am I? Yeah. I'm sorry, they've all done it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maitland has, a, has been given a large amount of COVID relief money. What do you think it should be spent on and why do you think that? And candidate Repanon will go first on this one. Okay, well, I was just mentioning something they could spend it on. Um, I think it's a really, really important thing to have our city be safe for bicyclists, for people that are driving, for mothers that are pushing strollers. And if you're a pedestrian, you certainly have the right to have a safe crossing of a street called 1792 Horatio. So I really push that we fix that. Candidate Wurzel. Yes, so we're receiving about $8.8 .8 million from the federal government that will have to be spent, I believe, by 2023, all of it. And I know I've reviewed the, um, the documents called the CIP that um, the city already has that ranks based on a lot of factors, including safety, how long it's been on the agenda, um, things like that that rank objectively or fairly objectively where this money should be used. So certainly I'm a big fan of objective data. That's um, the lawyer in me and I would pay great attention to those factors which do ultimately land on things like bike and pedestrian safety, our sewage upgrades that are needed particularly in Domerick and lake, um, lake cleanliness and things like that as well. I also really believe that we have opportunity to increase civic engagement and communication in our uh, community so that everyone has a fair opportunity to know what's going on and to uh, feel that their voices are heard equally across the city. And so I do think also uh, it would be important to me that our citizens, to the extent that they wanted to, were involved in that and knew what was going on. Candidate Lilly. I believe what we can do with the American Rescue Plan, uh, we can pay lost revenue from the pandemic, make investments into roads, water, drainage systems, and sewer. We also uh, pay premium pay to essential public service employees, and grants can help give that as well for the continuum. Uh. The next question will be answered by candidate Wurzel first. Small and, and 
having basically created the business um, after my kids went to bed at <laughs> three in the morning, um, I know how much it takes and what it takes to keep them going and how much uh, COVID has affected that. I think that what small businesses in this context need in terms of our community is the support of our communities. So we need to support them and make it easier for citizens to support them, to walk to them, bike to them. Um, and also to be the kind of community that attracts small businesses and is friendly to small businesses. And I think there's a lot of ways we can do that, both financially um, in terms of creating environments that a lot of people are uh, frequenting. I think the things like the Maitland Downtown Get Down and the, and the Independence Lane Downtown Center we're creating create an environment that are really, it's really conducive to the small businesses in the area um, and is the kind of place my family likes to go. And I also think that we need to make sure that we are, as a council, thinking critically and being consistent in our decision making to make it an attractive and safe place for businesses to know they can come and do business here in Maitland. Candidate Lilly. Candidate Lilly. I've talked to small businesses in of Maitland and they do believe they are doing well. Um, our population, I guess the, the good thing about our population is bringing people in, but if we do have better walkability and pedestrian safety, people can get to these businesses more. And uh, I know that some are driving and then uh, some of the small businesses are saying, well, we need more parking because, you know, people not only do we need walkability, we need more parking spaces as we do the redevelopment plan and continue Independence Lane. Candidate Levin. Okay. Candidate Rappenham. I really like small businesses. I support small businesses. And one of the things that I want to advocate and have in the past, but it hasn't worked very well, and that is that we need to really get back close relationships with the um, Chamber of Commerce. Our chamber moved out of Maitland. I'd like to work on the idea that they move back. I'd like to work on the idea that if you have a business and you have something special going on, that you could be addressed in the city website and people could get to know what business is doing what and and join in the fun. Um, it, some of these ideas though, are you, you almost say, well, of course they would do that, but it, there's a lot involved in changing things and people don't like change a lot of times, but it would be very, very nice if we could build a good, strong relationship like the uh, men of Maitland. <laughs> They have a club that's, uh, you know, that's very, very nice, very, very strong, and we could form different clubs and really bring things to a very, very nice uh, entertainment. Okay, we now go to our one-minute questions, and we'll start with candidate Lily on this one. The Maitland Public Library is considered a gem of Maitland. Have you participated in any of the workshops or budget hearings about plans for this facility? I've attended, I've attended uh, city council meetings about where it would be placed and if we need, we still don't even know actually if we're going to do North Packwood um, and I I don't think they know exactly what the design plans are yet. It still it still needs to be having a survey for the residents. So I I don't know any of that until they do surveys for all of us residents and until they can let us know where they're going to build it and what they want what they want in it. <laughs> That's it. Candidate Rappenau. The library is a gem. I, I have fond, fond memories of my 
young kids coming to the library and we sat in a little tiny room and everybody was really packed in, the mothers and the children, and for story time and it was just the sweetest part of life to see the children blossom and get excited about a book and, and take home books and it really plants a very strong development in that child that reading is fun, reading is something that you can learn about, so if you want to know about something, you can read. And I fully support reading. I fully support a library. I have heard people say we don't need a library, that reading is out of style now. People just listen to the news and they're fine. Boy, I hit that one right on the line. <laughs> <laughs> um, candidate words. Yes, I have. I'm a researcher by nature. That's what I do. So I have um, read the library space needs um, report, which discusses why we need a new library so desperately um, due to accessibility concerns and really outgrowing the space and, and, and the property. I've read the site studies that discuss the three potential sites uh, that are up for discussion currently and a really inspiring uh, sort of sociological study on the New American Library that got me excited um, about our future. And um, also I've read the results of the poll that was taken of Maitland Citizens recently that overwhelmingly supported um, the use of our funds on a new library. So I would support that and I'm excited about the future of that. The next, the next question starts with the candidate repping on. Traffic, congestion, and parking. The devil's holy trinity. <laughs> Describe the root causes of this perceived crisis and what solutions the city might have control over as remedies. Well, they tell me that the traffic will not get less. And the reason is we're really sitting on a very prime location. We have major streets, major uh, roads that will take us into downtown Orlando. We have major roads that will take us up north way. We have roads that have been widened recently. And it seems like every time they widen a road, all it does is make everybody wake up and say, ah, more space on the road, let's get out there. And it, it doesn't really work that way. I know it doesn't, but yet it does seem that way. And I would say one of our major problems right now is that in the last <clears throat> several weeks when I've been out canvassing what's happening with the people, every single neighborhood, let me finish, every single neighborhood said the major problem in their neighborhood was speeders. Every neighborhood. Candidate words I'll try in one minute. Uh, first of all, each road uh, is controlled by different parts, so the city or the county or the Department of Transportation. So it's important to know who can address what problem, but I also think relationship building is important. It's something I would intend to do with the county and in Tallahassee to ensure Maitland got more attention um, for the small town that we are and build those relationships. Also, community engagement is important. Again, making sure that citizens know what's going on and also traffic studies uh, are important and that citizens are aware of them, like the one on March 2nd um, coming up with the Department of Transportation. I believe in objective evidence to ensure that we're addressing traffic problems equitably, meaning all neighborhoods matter equally um, based on objective evidence. And finally, uh, emphasizing walkability and bikeable. The more we can get that going and put businesses of value in our communities, the less those of us who live here have to be in that pass through, predominantly pass through traffic. And I did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, candidate, where's where you get this one first? Oh, wait, oh I'm sorry. Traffic. <laughs> Traffic. Too many check marks. <laughs> <laughs> 
So on March 2nd, with the traffic study is uh, focusing on 1792 Maitland Avenue and Maitland Boulevard. I really wish they would focus on Horatio as well because we have issues on that. Um, we have several accidents. We have, within the past five years, we've had 192 accidents on Horatio, and I would like them to look at that. Uh, what, how to solve this issue, actually, we all need the traffic studies, but the redesigning of key problematic in intersections are always in cooperation with FDOT. And I believe they are using a special tool now instead of people in a in a group, you know, using a, a digital software to be able to see what in 30 seconds if an incident can happen. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and also we need smart adaptive traffic technology um, for the timing of the green lights and the cycles to match the current traffic conditions on the ground. Right, uh, we have we need real time. Right now um, we have I need you to preset. Stop. Okay. Sorry. Um, candidate Words will get this one first. How will you get other elected representatives, commissioners, or council members to work with you? Well, I'm a, a trial attorney by nature, so I like to think I'm fairly persuasive, and I also know as a negotiator for a living, it begins with relationship. I truly believe everyone has things in common, um, in common ground, and I like to listen to people. I always learn from everyone. I think every single person, uh, whether it's someone on council or another elected representative, has something to offer, and I always like to keep that in the Rolodex and also um, use that for building relationships. I think it's honestly one of my greatest strengths. Um, I also think, and I hear in the question outside of our council, the people that you work with directly or the city employees, that again, as I said before, that there are a lot of opportunities to be had by building relationships at the county and in Tallahassee. Um, Maitland does not get a lot of attention. We are small, and I do believe that I could make an impact on that, again, as part of my experiences professionally um, in Tallahassee. Candidate I believe I can work with the city council. Um, I don't have to be persuasive. I think that they can figure out some, you know, what they would want for their city as well as I would. But it's really not for me. It's what the citizens want. And I remember each and every person that I have spoken to in the past couple of months and I will remember them up there when I, if I do get elected. Candidate recommend? I'm the easy one. I, I rarely get mad, rarely. And I, I found out at a young age that it's a lot nicer to be nice and be treated nice than it is to raise your voice and pick on somebody and the whole day's shot. It just makes you feel really, really bad. Our staff is outstanding. I really enjoy our staff. Is that the cut up already? Oh. <laughs> um, they really are enjoyable. I, I love to work with them. They help me. They give me hints on, you know, I, I'll say, oh gosh, is this the correct procedure? And they, they don't go, oh, now that was a stupid question. N nothing like that. We work together. It's a great community. The only thing is I really felt like when we built City Hall, I like the old City Hall because I could go in and pass out cookies every Friday. And, and the new one, they lock their doors. Excuse me. No. Okay. Sorry. Um, this question will go to candidate Lilling first. Do you support or oppose a penny sales tax for mass transit? Why? If a penny sales tax is considered, what should those funds be used for? Uh, repeat the question sure do you support or oppose a penny sales tax for mass transit why 
if a penny sales tax is considered, what should those funds be used for? Well, the penny sales tax can completely revamp our central Florida's transit system from SunRail to Lynx. We can uh, create a multi-model transportation system that would get people off the roads and alleviate traffic. So yes, I do support it. And I believe 50% of the tax is paid out of the visitors. Candidate Revenue. I would, I would first investigate whether people are actually going to participate in SunRail. I was gung-ho when we first started studying SunRail. And yet, I asked the other day, and it came back the same way, that we are one of two of the least using SunRail. We, we have the fewest people boarding SunRail and getting off SunRail. So if we're going to use pennies, we need to make sure we've got people on board. Candidate Bristol. I, I don't believe that currently this is an issue that's really got a lot of support in Maitland and something we're discussing here now. Um, I think that there are a lot of other innovative ways that we can support uh, public transportation in Maitland. Some of the ones we currently use are the use of a mobility fee, basically charging developers, new developers, for the traffic problems that they cause and, help, and using innovative uh, ways to combat traffic using those funds as well as the CRA, which is helping develop our downtown, um, which a lot of those funds go to development, which is based on uh, increased property values. That said, I would love to see, like the other candidates, that more development of SunRail and um, its ways to serve Maitland, but we're a long way from that based on the hours and the days that SunRail runs um, in terms of being able to serve our citizens, but certainly would like to see SunRail um, participate with Maitland a little bit better on, on a serving our needs in that way. Thank you. Um, candidate Repanon, you get the next one first. I have covered up at the moment. <laughs> what would you like to see happen to or do for the west side of Maitland across I-4? Why? Well, the first thing that's across I-4 on the west side is our west side office. Um, Park, and they are hurting. We, we, you know, don't want to say that too loudly, but it's important to understand that when the pandemic came through, many, many people went home and started working out of their homes. Many of those workers have decided that they like working out of their homes. It's cheaper and they don't have to dress up. And, and so what is happening, the buildings are starting to empty out there. And you have to understand that that building, those buildings have supplied over 50% of our tax base for the last many, many years. And some years it was much higher than 50%. So it kept our taxes down. But turn and look at your neighbor and say, your taxes are going to go up if we can't figure out a, a really smart way of trying to redevelop a 35-year-old park and redo it. And your time is up. Sorry. Um, candidate Wurzel. I would like to see the West Side get the attention that it deserves. I agree um, with Ms. Reppin in that they're a big part of our tax base. All of our undeveloped land is on the West Side in Maitland, and it's all zoned for multifamily and, rest and commercial at this point. Uh, the commercial businesses that are out there, there's no, not a lot of restaurants or places for the people who work in those buildings to go for lunch, and there are a lot of innovative plans I've heard of that would help build back that part of our economy. I also think that the multifamily residences that are out there also matter and contribute a lot to our tax base and, and it should be reflected in our policies. And also the pedestrian bridge that connects the west and east side um, is something that should be promoted and valued and also um, make sure that we can make it safely usable for those who want to transverse from the east side to the west side. Thank you. Um, candidate Lilly. 
Well, I agree with both Ms. Wurzel and uh, Ms. Revenen that uh, it does need to be redeveloped. We do need to put more attention into that west side. Um, we put so much attention onto the east side, but we need to redevelop over there and maybe we can repurpose some of the buildings. I believe that that is quite possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, leading this time with candidate Wurzel, if the voters honor you by electing you, your decisions will impact Maitland for years to come. What would you like your one most celebrated accomplishment to be looking back 10 years from now? I would like it to be that I truly represented everybody in Maitland equally. Um, that I didn't stand for my neighborhood or anybody else's or any one cause, that I didn't stand here to stand against things, but that I stood for something and got things done. Um, the number one thing I think would be most impactful and that I would do basically right away if I was elected would be to follow up with every single one of you that I've spoken with who had concerns, but also those of you who have ideas. A lot of you have very good ideas and to follow up even though everything can't be accomplished right away or maybe at all that that i will follow up and i will make sure that more and more people feel a part of this community and are engaged in, in our civic life and i'd like to leave that as a legacy candidate lily can you repeat the question i just want to make sure i'm if the voters honor you by electing you your decisions will impact Maitland for years to come. What would you like your one most celebrated accomplishment to be looking back 10 years from now? Well, what I would want if um, I have Ms. Porters, if I'm elected, I would listen to them listen to everything that they have told me, uh, what they would like to see in their neighborhoods. And also I speak to the police and fire department as well, because they're also part of our community. I do believe that our employees of the city need to have better pay, need to have incentives to stay. Uh, our police and fire, they are accredited they are professionals they train very hard they're well trained we need to pay them as such but what i really would like to do also is to redo the sewage uh, the septic to sewage and then also we have a repair work a lot of repair work to do in, in a lot of old neighborhoods sewage. that's the end <laughs> Candidate Rebanon. If I wanted to please myself and look back 10 years from now, I hope it's that I really took the command of the library situation and ensured that our, our kids and our families have a library of their own in their own city and that they can have programs there and that it can be something that everyone in the city is proud of. Thank you. We are now going to go to your closing three minute statements. And candidate Lilling, you get to go first for your closing statement. If I'm fortunate enough to be elected, I promise to serve responsibly and with all fairness. Together, we can maintain Maitland to be a healthy, beautiful, safe place to live. It was a pleasure meeting many Maitland residents as I campaigned throughout. And I thank you for your support and for the support of everyone allowing us to be able to speak today. Thank you. Candidate Wurzel. 
This whole journey started for me personally because I started watching YouTube school board meetings because my daughter started Domerick in 2020 fall. You know how that story uh, begins and ends. And that's my personality. I like to get involved. I like to learn about things. And I like to tell everybody with an earshot what's going on. Um, my husband's here. You can talk to him after. He can attest to that quality. Um, and so that's really what put me here. Um, and I do want to fight for what's right, but I also am really more motivated by all the good things that I see in Maitland, and I genuinely get more and more excited in this process every day with talking to people and learning more and more about our community. Um, the things that I can say about me, I like to rally people together. It's something that I enjoy doing, connecting people. So I'd like to take the art museum and connect them with the library and the city council and the citizens and put them all together and make sure we're getting the best out of everybody that we can in Maitland because I think we have something really special and I would really like to see us tell the rest of Central Florida about how special Maitland is. Um, and I also am a critical thinker. I can promise that I would gather all information in any decision and consider all of it and make the most nuanced contextual decision possible each time considering everybody um, in Maitland. And also finally the things that um, my family knows best but everybody around me is that I, I get things done. I like to be efficient, I like to get in and make sure that we're using time wisely, that I would be a good steward of your time and your money and make sure that we were not wasting time holding us back on things that we shouldn't be wasting time on and spending time on getting things done that will make an impact to make sure that Maitland is the best that it can be and that I know and I know you know it can be. So thank you. Candidate Rappaport. Ask the question again, please. No, it's just your closing statement. There was no question. Okay, so. Three minutes. <laughs> three minutes, okay. So, can I use this time to um, answer why I'm running? Okay, I'd like to do that then. <clears throat> One of the things that I did when I first moved to Florida and Maitland was I started volunteering. I volunteer all the time. If somebody needs some help, I'll help them. And I started out at the library, and I <clears throat> helped out there. I dusted shelves. We, we painted in the library. We planted plants in the library, uh, patio area. I love to volunteer. I had my own uh, committee of volunteers. <clears throat> the, Beautification Committee for five years. When 42 of our employees were laid off, we didn't have people to do the work, so we planted trees, we cleared shrubbery, we, we did a lot of different things, you know, to help the community. And it's always, always fun. There wasn't a single dropout from that group. And to this day, they say how much fun it was to work together and we'd work on a Saturday and we cleaned if you remember the old um, steakhouse that was over here <clears throat> and then <clears throat> excuse me it started growing weeds and we worked on that and it was so difficult to pull those weeds because they were about four feet high but it, it's fun to do that kind of thing and so what happens is I I will volunteer, you know, to help some group, and that's what happened to my <clears throat> days because I really, really enjoyed so many activities in our city to help other people. And my favorite thing with the, the holidays is uh, recently passing is six years in a row I got to be Santa's helper and I got to greet all the little kids, you know, and it, it was so much fun. And watching these dogs climb up in Santa's lap and have their picture taken. Uh, it, it, it's just a great community. It really is a fine community. Um, and I want to be sure and say that if you really don't know what to do, talk to me, I'll get a job for you to do. You know, if you're retired and you're not doing anything, 
I'll find something for you to do, and it'll be fun. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank all of you for coming, but I'd also like to particularly thank our three candidates and offer them a big round of applause. For all of them. Thank you again to the venue for helping to put this together. Thank you all for coming and caring enough about your local government to come out and find out about the candidates and meet them. Um, I encourage you, please, go vote. Yeah. Yes. People don't always understand that the local election, the local city council, is the group that has the greatest impact on you as an individual. Don't lose this opportunity to have a say in your community. Please vote by absentee ballot or early voting by going, I'm sorry, you have to go down to the Supervisor of Elections office on Cayley Street. But you can also vote on March 8th in your precincts. Thank you very much for joining us tonight.